Welcome to the Ask Jeff YouTube channel, and here's today's question. It says, why in Luke chapter 3, verse 38, does it say that Adam was the son of God? I thought that Jesus was God's only begotten son. It also says in the genealogy that Luke doesn't necessarily line up with Matthew, particularly after King David. All right, this is a great series of questions because when we go to the lineages or the genealogies of Jesus Christ, there are actually two different ones that are mentioned in the Bible. In the book of Matthew, it actually starts talking about this is the genealogy of David and of Abraham, and then it works our way back to whom we know as Jesus Christ. In Luke, it starts with Jesus and actually goes all the way back to Adam. They're actually in reverse. And yes, per the question, there's actually different names that are utilized because there are different purposes in the lineages. In the book of Matthew chapter 1, the whole purpose of the genealogy of Jesus Christ is to show that he is the king of Israel. He is the prophesied one. In Luke, which shows Jesus Christ more as the son of man, quote, rather than the son of God, we have the idea that goes all the way back to Adam because he is of, shall we say, human lineage. He is the one that was prophesied in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, coming from the seed of the woman. Same genealogies in different orders and at time using different people because in these genealogies, they don't necessarily go in necessarily strict order. In other words, you may have a grandfather, a dad, a son, a grandson, but in the other one, it may skip two of those and go straight from the grandfather uh, to the great grandson. There's no error in this and there's no conflict in it. It's just utilizing different, shall we say, um, generations for the purpose of the analogy. By the way, in Matthew, it has it in three series of 14. In Luke, not so much. So at the end of the day, why is it that in the Gospel of Luke, particularly, Jesus, or they're called, the, that Adam is called the Son of God, when only Jesus is the only begotten Son of God? Whether you know it or not, whoever submitted the question, you answered your question in the way that you phrased the question. A son of God. That, that's a vague term. In the book of Job in the Old Testament, angels are referred to as the sons of God. In the New Testament, in John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, when we believe on Jesus Christ, we are called the son of God. Adam, when he was formed of the dirt of the earth, he is referred to as the son of God or the descendant of God. Jesus Christ, per what you ask, is called the only begotten Son of God. And that word is critical to the question. The term begotten, if you were to dig down in the etymology, it technically means one gene. That's important because when what we know is the incarnation, the Christmas story, Jesus Christ was of one gene. He was born of the Holy Ghost. He was purely God, even though he was held within a human womb. There was, quote, nothing of Mary or a sinful human, uh, shall we say, lineage that impacted his bloodstream. Why is that critical for us? Because I have three sons in my own home. None of them are begotten. Why? Because genetically, they're a combination of my wife and I. And it's interesting, in any home and in any family, when you line up siblings, uh, they will all have differences and they will all have similarities because you have all these different biological strains coming together. But Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God because he is the only one that is purely and only God himself. Adam was made by God in his image, as a son of God. The angels created by him are called sons of God. And you and I are referred to as sons of God when we believe in Jesus Christ, but he is the only begotten one. That's why it's so important when you read the New Testament that says that as believers, we are now in Christ. We're part of his body because we are grafted in. We are pictured as being a part of the only begotten. So Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of God even though there are others in the Bible that are referred to as sons of God. It's a great question you brought up, which makes John 3.16 all that more important. When it says, for God so loved the world, and by the way, there are some translations out there that say that he gave his one and only son. That may be true, but I like the old one that says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only, you guessed it, begotten son. Unique, different, only of God himself great question. If you have a question, send it to askjeff.net and maybe your question will be tomorrow's. 
Thanks for being a part of today's daily question. Now, we answer a question each and every day. Please feel free to submit a new question at AskJeff.net. We may not have gotten to yours today, but we eventually will continue to be a part of this. Subscribe so you don't miss out on a question every day.